There's something happening to me. There's something awakening in my mind. I can't control it. What did you see? Paul. Hey, John. So we've got another special episode behind the scenes. Uh, this is a project that I've been working on, uh, recreating the Dune trailer. I was inspired by the Lord of the Rings trailer that we saw and covered in, on the Fives the other week. And I wanted to see if I could do the same thing. And it turned out to be a pretty tall order, I have to say. But, um, but yeah, I wanted to run you through my process. Yeah, now why Dune? Well, I've been a big fan of Mobius Jean Giraud uh, since the heavy metal comic book days. And there was a project by Alejandro Jodorowsky uh, where he assembled a bunch of artists and was planning to create a really surreal, bizarre, uh, amazing version of Dune based on Mobius's art. Uh, so I really always wanted to recreate something like that, but I thought I'd, I'd start with something maybe a little bit less ambitious and base it on the, the film that we've seen by Villeneuve. So really that was my starting point as kind of a technical exercise in Mobius's style. I think I read a little bit about that where they actually had like a, like a story Bible or an art Bible that became this hot item that got sold at an auction and it wasn't supposed to be out there. And mm. they say, yeah, I love that you've gone to reimagine this this trailer in, in that style because no one has ever really got a chance to see it. <laughs> yeah, John, this film Bible has become something of legend. It's never officially been released by Jodorowsky. And you're right, it does seem to have leaked through an auction and there's even a video of someone flipping through it online. But for the documentary film, the filmmaker had the privilege of sitting down with Jodorowsky and actually going through it and hearing him talk through it page by page. So yeah, it was just something fascinating. And I also wanted to see as a kind of tech demo, you know, how hard it is to work in a different style because we've seen a lot of people using the Studio Ghibli style. Um, but how hard is it to animate a very different style that doesn't really have as much precedent in anime? So that was another challenge of, of this project. So here you can see, I mean, uh, my starting point was Sora. Uh, a lot of people are using ChatGPT. ChatGPT was just too um, slow for me to use. So I found that you could, I could get a similar effect in Sora. And you can see I, I went through and I captured every cut. So this was <laughs> another reason why this trailer wasn't very easy to, to work with, was there were a lot of cuts in this trailer. And so I ended up with about 110 images to then convert into the style of Mobius. But here you can see that that's, that's the conversion when you ask it. So it is a pretty good, pretty faithful, and my prompt is to try to recreate the style and keep the composition, colors, and vibe. Uh, and it does that, does it pretty faithfully. Uh, what you don't get, the, I guess the difference if you were to use ChatGPT is that you could get more consistency, uh, character consistency from frame to frame. So occasionally I had to remind, remind the, the AI that it was done in, uh, you know, that he has brown hair or change his hair color. So, so you have to kind of manually do that sometimes. So in some ways it's like doing it like almost a like keyframe animation where you're picking mm. just frame to frame from certain moments. Definitely. Definitely. And, and here you can see like, you know, didn't always get it on the first attempt and I had to reprompt. Uh, but let me then show you. So the images were, were one thing and that was, you know, a challenge, but it did a pretty good job of, uh, faithfully recreating it. But I think what was even more challenging, obviously, is the, the animation. So here's a, a, which I did in Halo o Minimax. And here you can see, you know, some of these took many, many attempts to try to get, get right. And often, I mean, this is where the, the fact that there were so many clips cut together was good because, uh, all I needed from some of these clips was about a second that worked. So there's some, some clips that go completely wonky at some point and I was just able to grab a second you know second that I was able to work I mean things like her expression here was something that I really had trouble you know she, there she walks off you know she, she starts doing all sorts of things uh, and, it, and it's really just a, a plain reaction shot there you know I had her look up and she takes it a little bit too far so it's really you know there it sort of changes into a a different character altogether. So, so yeah, I mean, all these, all these things you don't, you know, she sort of floats off. It's really funny to, to try to get, get this. Yeah. Now other tools that could be used, I think I've seen with some of the Ghibli images that have been turned into video, they've been using Hydra, I believe to do that. Yeah. So for, um, for dialogue, I mean, that's something that I've, I've played around with just, uh, you know, for the most part, I wasn't trying to get clips with dialogue but um but I have looked in and we'll see in the final clip I may even go back in and and 
do some lip syncing here. But yeah, those tools tend to be pretty good if you have a static shot. Um, but for a lot of these, I was trying to get uh, the motion to just recreate the motion that we see in the in the video. And they had, you know, the most difficult part being kind of battle sequences that just, you know, I, I was able to use pieces of, but they just didn't really know what they were doing. or They completely lost coherence with what, what the original image was. And then strangely, there's a scene of like all these guys floating down. And I, for the life of me, could not get a good version of that. I ended up using a piece of this one where it's, um, there's like a piece of it that's usable, but I couldn't get like all the guys floating down. They always hear they're floating up and they're, they're kind of jumping <laughs> around and going up and down. So it was really, it's just weird stuff like that, that you just can't predict. Also getting, getting a crowd of soldiers to move, you know, it decided it, it wasn't going to stick to the original picture or, you know, it just sort of scrolls over them and none of them move. Um, so yeah, you just have to have to adapt. And I mean, I think the facts, what made it difficult is that I'm, I am trying to match frame for frame what, uh, what was in the trailer. So I think if I were just doing my own thing, I could be more flexible and, and, you know, if it gave me something back that I didn't expect, I could just work with that. But here I'm really trying to get them to match the exact movement of, of what they were doing in that video. Yeah, this is making me think a little bit about the recent kind of report, news, whatever that is, of, of the um, the CTO from Pixar who spoke at Andreessen Horowitz about maybe two weeks ago and was talking about that the AI tools just don't have the control that they need for the Pixar level of filmmaking. Is that is that what's kind of really happening here? Is that you would really need a little bit more control to get it exactly what you need? Well, I, th I actually think it, it requires, if you're going to do something original, you kind of need need to think about directing the scene differently. You need to play to the fact that you're not going to have as accurate control. Uh, I mean, there are new tools coming out every day that give you more control over the scene, and, and you can really direct it with you know the camera shot exactly how you want it. So we may get further along in, in being able to give it specific commands, but um, I think the most successful AI video is, is like a, a kind of compromise where you, you give it some direction and then you kind of work with whatever it gives you back. So I think with that, we can show the video now. Let's, let's do it. There's something happening to me. There's something awakening in my mind. I can't control it. What did you see? <sighs> There's a crusade coming. <sighs> Do you often dream things that happen just as you dream them? Yes. The test is simple. Remove your hand from the box and you die. What's in the box? Pain. You inherit too much power. You have proven you can rule yourself. Now you must learn to rule others. Something none of your ancestors learned. My father rules an entire planet. He's losing it. He's getting a richer one. He'll lose that one too. <laughs> Arrakis is a death trap. This is an extermination. They're picking my family off one by one. Let's fight like demons. An animal caught in a trap will gnaw off its own leg to escape. What will you do? I know you. One day, the legend will be born. All of civilization depends on it. The future, I can see it. I must not fear.
fear is the mind killer. My Lord Duke. Where the fear is gone, only I will remain.